afternoon and buenas tardes. I'm here today to uh, introduce to you the uh, Consul General of Mexico to Colorado. He is a uh, regional consul also because uh, he has over three other consulates in the mountain region. Eduardo Arnal was appointed Consul General of Mexico in Denver by President Felipe Calderón and ratified by the Mexican Congress on August 15 of 2007. So it means that he is not a uh, career consul, that he is a political appointment, and, uh, and you'll see that he has a very rich uh, political career. In uh, 2003, he was city manager of the city of uh, Atizapan de Zaragoza, the state of Mexico. You tried to say that. And uh, he uh, also holds a degree in law from the prestigious Universidad de Pedregal in Mexico City. Uh, from 2000 to 2003, he served as a federal congressman for the National Action Party, the PAN, in the Chamber of Deputies or Cámara de Diputados, Mexico's House of Representatives, in the 58th legislature. During his tenure, he was a member of the Commission on International Relations and the Commission on Strengthening Federalism. He also served as president of the Mexico-Argentina Friendship Group, so we are friends. In 2002, he was a participant in the National Democratic Institute's political leadership program in Washington, D.C. In 1997, he was executive secretary to the mayor of Azizapan de Zaragoza, state of Mexico. In 1996, he was legal parliamentary advisor to the Commission of uh, Governance on the Constitutional Affairs at Mexico's House of Representatives. That is a mouthful. And in 1994, he also served as legal parliamentary advisor to Miguel Estrada Iturbide Foundation, a think tank for the National Action Party. He has participated in several seminars and other activities around the country and around the world and in Mexico. I'm not going to go into them to give him more time for his speech. He was born in Mexico City. He is married to his fabulous wife, uh, Cecilia Ramos. He has two great children, Pamela and Eduardo. Let's please welcome the Consul General of Mexico. Thank you very much. And first of all, I, I want to introduce two members of my staff that they are coming with me today. First of all, is Laszlo Caloy, that he's our Council for Community Affairs. <laughs> and Marcela de la Mar, that she is Director for Cultural and, and um, Educational Affairs in the Consulate. And before to, to start, let me, uh, let me you know that the Mexican consulate is the oldest and the biggest in the region. We're founded in 1893. We have been here for 115 years, and I always add, and renting. You know, they, if they decide to, to buy a property in 1893, right now we have the owners of the half of downtown, and maybe my office will be in, in the Brown Palace or something like that, but <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs> Finally, I have the honor to be the Consul General of Mexico uh, since almost two years ago. And well, first to all, I want to thank the Rotary Club and especially Andrew Van Hal. Where's Andrew? Oh, Andrew Van Hal. And, and Roland Thornton for this opportunity to share an update of the situation prevailing in Mexico during the last two years as a way to start setting the record straight. The Mexican federal government is setting its own house in order. And I'm proud to say that we have successful, tangible results. President Felipe Calderón, a struggle against organized crime, especially drug trafficking, has had, as suspected, a violent reaction from these groups as they fight for their privileges and domination. This response has been desperate in some cases, and it was reflected several weeks ago when a kingpin of the powerful drug cartel La Familia Michoacana called into a radio show to propose a truce to the government. The petition was obviously rejected. The roof reaction of criminal groups has been misin mis misinterpreted by the media and far from being shown as a matter of crime prevention, it is, has been reflected as a national security issue. Even more, 
there were some voices suggesting that Mexico was a failed state or a narco state. Clearly, those voices had no idea about the real impact of what it means, and actually that description grossly distorts the facts on the ground. Mexico simply does not fit the pattern of a failed state, which includes lack of control over territory and of provision of public services. Existence of displaced people or refugees, civil disobedience, disobedience, sorry, inability to collect taxes, economic disarray, infant mortality, and lack of interaction with the international community. It is difficult to see how the label fits. Mexico has a strong democracy and solid institutions, a vigorous civil society, sound macroeconomic fundamentals, and above all, the Mexican government maintains full control of its territory. In the 2008 Failed States Index, compiled by the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Mexico has, was ranked 105 of 177 countries and, is no, uh, and is, has no significant ethnic conflicts, no separatist movements, and no territorial disputes with neighboring countries. Also, Mexico has no risk of a military coup. It has no known presence of terrorist organizations and has full control of its territory. However, Mexico does indeed face a significant challenge from organized crime. Well-armed and well-financed criminal gangs have sought the rollback government actions through the use of violence and corruption using tactics more brutal every time. But let me make clear that drug-related violence has been heavily concentrated in three northern and two southwestern states. Only five of a total of 31 states, which are home of 15.25% of the Mexican population. The most violent state, Chihuahua, in the northern part of the country, has seen 700 times more drug-related murders than the least violent state, which is Tlaxcala, in the central part of Mexico. But listen to this compression, which I'm sure is going to surprise you. Ciudad Juarez, the hardest hit city located precisely in Chihuahua, has a murder rate that is more or less in line with that of crime-ridden cities in the United States and is, for example, six times lower than Medellin, Colombia during the Pablo Escobar era. In spite of the recent spike in drug-related murders, the general murder rate in Mexico has been on a downward trend and remains significantly below regional standards comparable to the rate registered in the US in the early 90s. The increase in drug-related murders is a response of drug trafficking organizations to government pressure and the inability to deliver narcotics to the consumer market in the US. It is a process similar to the killing spree suffered by the United States during the crack economic and subsequent police chap down of the 80s and the 90s. As I said, at the beginning, now the Mexican federal government is setting its own house in order. A systematic and sustained campaign of law enforcement launched by President Felipe Calderón has seriously deted, dented their illegal operations. Mexico has accomplished three world records on single operations against organized crime. The highest amount of cocaine sized which is 24 tons. The highest amount of confiscated cash, you can see the picture, more than $204 million in hundreds. And the highest amount of firearms, including 500 guns, dozens of grenades, and a half a million of ammunition. The Mexican government Comprehensive, the Mexican government's comprehensive in strategy against organized crime has five major components. Recovery of public spaces, 
law enforcement operations, institutional